everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right, as this is the, the preparation day, and as the Lord has also gathered us for these meetings, I pray that the Lord would, would, would fill us with His Spirit, even today, that, that we may be prepared to receive even more of what He's going to give us um, tomorrow on the Sabbath. For as, as like in, in, in a restaurant, the, the restaurants give you an appetizer or something to, to prepare your palate to receive the, the main course. So as the preparation day is right before the Sabbath, the preparation day is also an appetizer to allow us to receive the main and, and the most blessing that the Lord is to give us on the, the Sabbath day. So I pray that um, the things that we are going to go over in these meetings, they may be old truths, but their old truths are to be shown how? In a new way. In a new way. Amen. How it pertains to us in our day, how it pertains to, to our own lives and the sanctuary that, that we live in. Amen. <clears throat> so as we go through these points, as we go through the, the old writings, I pray that it may, may find us well and rejuvenate us that we may be given life once again and be brought into the Sabbath rejoicing with, with, um, with all the unfallen worlds. Amen? So I pray that as we, we, we gather this weekend, that it may be um, a blessing and nourish us um, greatly. But without any uh, further ado, let us open up with a silent word of prayer. <clears throat> Amen. So, though it may be early in the morning, I pray that we all may still be lively and and give thanks uh, and give thanks that the Lord has given us life in this new day by being energized to receive His His holy word and be able to participate and share the thoughts that the Lord has given unto us. Amen. So last week and um, the weeks prior. Um, my brethren have been going over the, um, the topic of, of the sanctuary, the 2300, and, um, and, and altogether the, the whole midnight cry experience that we're coming up to. Amen? And the Lord says that we must, we must go back to the old and go back to Millerite history to see how they had their experience in the midnight cry and how we are to um, have that same experience for as the Lord has brought us to the 54th month, which is in Millerite history, July 21st, he has showed us, he has opened up um, how they have, 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 have been um, walking from that point all the way down to October 22nd. So the Lord is going to bring us down a different way. No, he's going to bring us out down the, the same way, the same way that, that the Millerites went from July 24, 21st all the way to October 22nd. And, and how they got to the Day of Atonement and so on, he's going to bring us down the same roads. So as, as the heavens opened on um, July, 24, July 21st, the, the heavens opened for us. And as the light shined upon them, the light is shining upon us. But we must receive it how? By, yes, by faith and also in its order. So... All these things are to illuminate our minds and bring us to a right understanding of how the Lord is, is leading, leading us and how he's going to gather us all together. So the, the first quote in our notes, it says, God has given me light regarding the periodicals. What is it? It says, he said that the dead are to do what? Speak. Are to speak. How? Their work shall, shall follow them. We are to repeat the, the words of of the pioneers in our work, who knew what it, 
who knew what it cost to search for the truth as for hidden treasure and who labored to lay the foundation of our work. They moved forward step by step under the influence of the Spirit of God. One by one, these pioneers are passing away. The words given, the words given me is, let, let that which these men have written in the past be, do, be what? Reproduced. Reproduced. So as the pioneers has given us these writings, we are to repeat these writings. As Israel in the past, they had to go over generation after generation how they were led out of Egypt, how the Lord delivered them through the Red Sea, how the Lord brought them to Sinai and give them the law. Amen? So since 1989, the Lord has brought us out of Egypt. The Lord has led us down through the Red Sea. And the Lord is bringing us to Sinai to do what? To give us the law. To give us um, the Sabbath. Amen? Because he did the same in Millerite history. Since 1798, he brought them out of Egypt. He brought them through the Red Sea. And then he brought them down to October 22nd, where he then gave them the law. Amen? Okay, so the same thing is to repeat in our history. So as they did, we are to do. And Millerites, in their time, they did the very same thing. They went over all the old paths. And since um, the fifth day, fourth month, the Lord has been impressing upon our hearts and minds to always go back over the old paths. Every single point we are to continually go over. And as we are to approach the, the Sunday law, which, in, in, which is in our time the anti-typical day of atonement, we are to prepare for that same thing as well. But the Lord must give us a type. Amen? Amen. The, must, the Lord must prepare us for the things that are taking place. So as the Lord brought us to July 21st, um, we must also be prepared for October 22nd. Amen? Amen. Which in Millerite history was what? The day of atonement. The day of atonement. So... So as the Lord brings us down these, these histories, the Lord is ultimately trying to bring us down to the Day of Atonement. And as the Lord has shown from, um, from Kennard, Swindon, and Romario, that from, from um, 457, where from the beginning of the 2300, all the way to the end of the 2300, in October 22nd, what did he bring them to? What happened? We just, same question again. The Day of Atonement. So the 2300... It leads right into what? The Day of Atonement. So first the 2300, and then it brings you right into the Day of Atonement. So this, so it is, of, it is no coincidence that the Lord is helping us to understand the what? The 2300. Amen. The Lord is helping us to understand the 2300 so that we can prepare for the judgment. Amen. Amen. So this is why the, we have been emphasizing how important these things are. I like that thought. So it's nice the way he prepared them for, to the day of atonement by helping them to understand the ministration of the 2300 days. Amen. So as we're getting ready for the judgment of the living, he must do the, the same, same thing. thing. Amen. And the Lord has an order. The Lord says that he must begin first. When he begins with the church, he must first begin with who? The, the ancient men. He must first begin with the ancient men. And this is not a self-exalting statement, but the Lord has, has made us the ancient men. Why? Because out of all of Adventism, just like he did with the disciples, we have answered the call. We have answered the call that the Lord has given us since 89. So since he has give, given us that call, since he has sent that call, and we have answered the call, we're the ancient men. Because we're walk, those ancient men are those walking in the advancing life. Amen. Amen. So, and, and why are we the ancient men? Because all, out of all of Adventism, we are the only ones who have the light. That's what also makes us the ancient men. So as Moses, as John, as Ezekiel, as Isaiah, as Jeremiah, as Nehemiah, as all the patriarchs and prophets, they had to go and give a message to the people. We are also to give a message to the people. But the 2300 shows us that we must first cleanse our temple. And a work must be done within us. And how that work is, is to be done is by going back to the old paths. By going back to the old paths and seeing how the Lord did it in their time is how we are to see how we are to do it in our time. And if we see how it is done in our time, what, we, what must we do? What must we do? Amen. Receive it. We must receive it and do it. 
because it is in doing it that we show forth to the entire universe because God knows our heart and he knows our thoughts. But to be entered back into the family, the rest of the Lord's children must see that we're following after Christ. And to follow after Christ is to follow after his character. Go ahead. To add to the point you made so that because I know people are going to stumble over that statement that, that, that God has given us light that others do not have. That's a true statement, and we're not to be ashamed to say that, because uh, she says very plainly, that the different parties of professed Advent believers have each a little truth, but God has given all these truths to his children who are being prepared for the day of God. He has also given them truth that none of these parties know, neither will they understand. Amen. So he's given truth to people that nobody else know, neither will others in Adventism understand Amen. until they accept the light for their time. Amen. <clears throat> and, and it is nothing of ourselves. All we did was to receive it, but the Lord poured out his oil upon us. And by doing that, it has brought us to that understanding. Daniel understood and um, Nehemiah understood, Jeremiah understood, but did, but did they themselves exalt themselves? No, they saw themselves just as filthy as their brethren. So we also are, are just as filthy, even more filthy than our brethren because we know better. Because you give mercy onto a child because he doesn't know, but you don't give mercy onto an adult because they know. Understand? All right. So let's go into our our past history. Let's go into the foundations of why we are called Adventists. So, <clears throat> and I'm going to, and in, in this portion, I'm just going to read through what, um, what they wrote. I'm not going to add anything or maybe explain a little bit more for um, if we don't understand or if anyone doesn't understand, please raise your hand. But I'm just going to read through what the pioneers um, have stated. So, AERS 212 paragraph 1. It says, Daniel, Daniel, said he, Daniel said he heard one holy, one holy one ask another how long this vision should be, even to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden on the foot. The answer is made to Daniel in these words, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now it has been seen by Leviticus 16 that the cleansing of the sanctuary and making the atonement mean precisely the same thing. For the atonement was made by the high priest, sprinkling the blood upon the mercy seat and altar, and cleansing them from the sins of the people. Hence, this expression in Daniel 8.14 is equivalent to saying, Unto 2,300 days, then shall, the, then shall the atonement be made. And again, to understand this time is to understand the fulfillment of the message of Revelation 14.6-7. So our pioneers are, are bringing together all these things. And just like I said earlier, the unto, um, unto 2,300 days, then shall you be brought to the atonement. So the 2,300 days brings you right to the, to the day of atonement, to the judgment. Amen? Go ahead. When you go through these statements, what it shows is mid-life history was in every other. Amen. It teaches you that, that it was impossible to not have mid-life history when you understand how the Lord laid out these things for them. Amen. Because they had to fulfill the, word, um, the, the very words that Daniel said. Amen. <clears throat> yes, amen. Because what... Amen. Because how the Lord has led us, and I say praise God for it, when it came to, let me just add it right here. When it came to midnight, in our, in our time, when it came to the fifth day, fourth month, the Lord showed us from Ezekiel that what, what was open? Amen. The heavens were opened. But the heavens is also a symbol to, um, to illustrate the mind. So the Lord opened up our minds to understand and to receive the things that are going to come at the midnight cry. So from the fifth day, fourth month, the Lord opened up our minds upon the judgment. So point by point by point, the Lord has been leading us in his order. 
and thus bringing us down to the judgment. Amen? Exactly, yes. So Miller did the same thing. Miller did his work, and then mm. Ellen White did her work. And then when, um, when it came down to them receiving the Sabbath, she said that they have been honoring a day that's been handed down by the heathen and the papists. But could she have received that if she did not receive Miller's rules? Mm. No. Could she have received that without receiving 1833? Mm. No. So, she, so point by point, every way mark, the Lord led them down and kept removing removing um, their errors, just like an onion, removing the layers until we got to, to the core. And to add to what Michelle was saying, I know she said we're being cleansed, but you have to separate the cleansing at the end from the one that's done prior, because one prepares you for the other. Um, it's true, we are being cleansed, but it says, on to 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary mm -hmm. be cleansed. It, there's a special cleansing that takes place at the end Amen. of the 20, but the one before that prepares you for that. Amen. Right? Well, you gotta, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. gotta fear God, you gotta give him glory, you gotta separate from the fallen churches, and then your sanctuary will mm -hmm. be cleansed. If you Amen. don't do that, you won't be cleansed at, at the at end. At the end. <clears throat> Amen. Just like just like um Passover prepares you for the day of atonement. So it's uh Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Okay. Um, going back to uh, where it says, and again, right above Revelation 14, 6 and 7. It says, and again, to understand this, this time is to understand the fulfillment of the message of Revelation 14, 6 um, and 7. The hour of his judgment is come, for the judgment sits when the atonement is made. Thus we see that the time was appointed and announced for the making for, for making the atonement. This, in, this is in conformity to the type where the tenth day of the seventh month was set apart to that work. While this text stands as a part of that, script, of that scripture, which is profitable for instruction, it is both interesting and profitable to inquire where these two, 2,300 days terminate. But to understand this, we must trace the connection between chapters 8 and 9 of Daniel. For chapter 9 is in part explanatory of chapter 8, the explanation of the time, the 2300 days, by give, being given in the latter, not in the, in, the, um, in the former. So then he continues and says, note the following points. So actually I'm going to go around. And everyone read point, uh, a point, starting with, um, with Michelle. Gabriel was commanded to make Daniel understand the vision. Swindon, number two. He explained in chapter 8 the symbols of the kingdom represented therein. He did not explain the time of birth. Fourteen. Come to give him understanding and commanded him to consider the vision. No vision had been mentioned since chapter 8, which shows that Daniel had reference to Gabriel. The, sorry, which shows that Gabriel had reference to the same vision which he was commanded to make to make him understand in that chapter. In chapter 9, he commenced instructing Daniel on time. The only thing in the vision not hitherto. Canard. He said, 70 weeks are determined, li literally cut off upon thy people. And it says, the 70 weeks commence from the, co the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, which is 457. The 70 weeks are evidently cut off from the 2300 days, the only period given in vision, in the vision. Therefore, the time of going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem must be the commencement of the 2300 days. And if the 70 weeks are not cut off from the 2300 days, that is, if the 70 weeks do not mark the beginning of those days, then no explanation of the days was given. And Gabriel never did what he was commanded to do. But such a supposition will not be urged. Therefore, 
we must admit that in Daniel 9, we have a clue of the 2300 days of Daniel 8. And to understand the 70 weeks of Daniel 9 is also to understand the 2300 days of Daniel 8, the two periods commencing together. Now, next quote, ARS 214.4 says, in regard to the nature of these days, says no argument can be needed. The 70 weeks of Daniel 9, marking the manifestation of the Messiah, which took place at the time of his baptism. Um, see Matthew 3, 16 and 17, John 1, 32 and 34, and Mark 1, 14 and 15, were not weeks of days, but weeks of years. To deny this were to settle one of the clearest evidence. Yes, amen, thank you. Um, yeah, to deny this were to unsettle one of the clearest evidences in favor of the Messiahship of, of, Jesus, of Jesus of Nazareth. But as the 70 weeks are part of the 2300 days of the vision of Daniel 8, those days were not solar days of 24 hours, but year days, each day for a year, according to a well-known method of counting, counting time, Ezekiel 4, 6. As the Messiah was to be cut off and cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease in the midst of, of the last week of the 70, which, which, was, um, which was in AD 31, and, and the time that the apostles turned to, turned, to the, turned to the Gentiles marked the close of that period, which was in 34 AD. It is easy to see that the 2300 days would not, would extend, sorry, uh, 18, 1810 years beyond that time or to 1844. And as the angel said, the sanctuary should be cleansed at the end of that period. This must refer not, not to the, the typical sanctuary, which was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD, but to the anti-typical sanctuary and true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. So, so the Lord sets apart those, um, the 70 weeks and the, um, the 1810. So from the, from the ending of, of, of uh, the week of Christ, that's where you, you begin that the time period of 1,810 years, bringing you from 34 all the way to, um, to 1844. Okay? All right. Next paragraph. It says, some are ready to object to this view that the heavenly sanctuary were our, where our high priest officiates cannot, be, cannot need cleansing, that there is nothing impure in heaven. The zeal of such to vindicate the honor of heavenly things is parallel with that of Peter, who rebuked the Lord for speaking of his ignominious death. He thought, he thought a victor's crown only was becoming his master, but God has, has a plain has a plan appointed, and the death of his son was in that plan. And the mistaken zeal of, of his servants must not be suffered to in, interfere with it. And that plan is also the atonement which God now exalt, no, God's now exalted son as priest makes in the sanctuary in heaven. And it has been sufficient, sufficiently shown that the atonement is made by the cleansing of the sanctuary. Let's go to the next point. Actually, I'm going to finish this quote. That this expression of the angel refers to the heavenly and not the earthly sanctuary may be proved by several considerations. The following, we think, is conclusive on this point. Michelle, can you read point one? The sanctuary was not cleansed from any impurity of its own, nor from any defilement from us. As ordinary <coughs> habitations are cleansed, but from sin, therefore it was cleansed by blood, a referring Father to Leviticus 15, it was it will be seen and will be noted hereafter that the, that the design was to take away the sins from the presence of God and remove them from the throne of judgment. But Paul declares in Hebrews 10:4 that it is, it is not possible. possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin, but that was all the blood the priest had to offer in the early sanctuary. Therefore, as the blood would not remove sin, it follows that the earthly sanctuary was never cleansed at all, except in figure, and never could have been had it remained, and the priest still officiated therein till the end of the 2300 days. Nevertheless, it, nevertheless, when I first 
the necessity. Amen. Swindon, point two. The sanctuary as the foremost was defiled by the sins of the people. Though the people never came in contact with it, the high priest stood as their representative. He bore their judgment. And he, as he alone went into the, holy, the most holy place, it followed that it was defiled by his bearing their sins. Now it is plainly stated that Christ bare our sins they were laid upon him. He is our representative before his father. And it seems evident that one of the following positions is true. That Christ has taken the sins of his people, or his people have taken their sins yet upon them. It will be admitted that the former is true. That as the representative and substitute of his sins, he takes their sins. But if he takes them, where does he take them? Certainly, where is he? Now it is by virtue of his priesthood that he now bears the judgment of the people. But his priesthood is in the heavenly sanctuary. There, according to the type, is where our sins are taken. To show this object, to show this is the object of the type. Amen. Quentin, point three. Okay, so ARS was from was from Wagner, and this was Wagner's teaching. So now let's go and see what um, Josiah Litch has to say upon the, the same matters. Um, Emily, can you read the, um, the next paragraph? Okay, what does an understanding of the, the 2300 give us? Skill and understanding. Amen. Skill and understanding. It puts us in the same position that Daniel was in, in the same position as Isaiah. And when Isaiah received it and he was touched with a, um, not, not when he was touched, but when he saw the angels, what happened? He said, woe is me. So when we receive the, the same thing, we have skill and understanding in our position in relation to what Christ in relation to Christ's position. And we say the very same things. Woe is me. Amen. All right? We are to humble ourselves and fall upon our face. That is what it is, it is, it is um, meant to do. Continue. Amen. Wes, the next paragraph. He then gave Daniel a key. Okay, so what's going to be given to us? A key. Okay, a key. That's what's going to unlock our minds and unlock the sanctuary. Amen? Because that's what, that's what happened to the Millerites. So if you give it to Daniel, he gave it to the Millerites, we already have two, two witnesses. So what's going to happen to us? The same thing. Go ahead. By which to understand the nature of the time and when to commence the 23 months. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, the Jews in thy holy city, Jerusalem, to finish the transgression, the, trans, the transgression whereby the national doom of the Jews and Jerusalem should be sealed and sorry, to be resealed. 
to be sealed, the rejection and death of Christ. Okay, the rejection and death of Christ to make an end of sin by satisfying divine justice by the one sin offering of Jesus Christ, to make reconciliation for iniquity by the atonement of the Savior. God has reconciled us to himself by the death of his Son to bring in, in everlasting righteousness as distinguished from the righteousness obtained by the offerings made under the law, were there, where there were was a remembrance of sins again every year. By Christ, but Christ by his own blood entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us, to seal up the vision and prophecy to confirm or make sure the vision and prophecy of which this 70 weeks is a supplement and key. For if the first was fulfilled, we may look for the fulfillment of the other in due time. To anoint the most holy or holiest of all, or holy of holies, thus Christ did. When he entered into the holiest by his own blood, he consecrated it for us. And we know, and we now have boldness by the blood of Jesus to enter into the holiest by a new and living way, which He consecrated. Amen. Val, the next two. Thus, all of which was predicted to take place in the seventy weeks was accomplished by the death of Christ. Then follows the time when the seventy weeks were to begin. Okay, so now this is what we have to really keep in mind. And this part is, is showing us the, sep the difference between the, the 490 and the 1810, okay? Bringing us all the way to the, um, the 2300, all right? All right, go ahead, Val. At the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, that commandment was given. B.C. 457 by Artaxerxes, king of Persia, in the seventh year of his reign. See Ezra 7, chapter. See Ezra 7, chapter. From B.C. 457 to A.D. 34, the time of the crucifixion is 490 years, the exact number of days in 70 weeks. Hence, the 70 weeks, or 490 days, are to be understood as standing, as standing each day for a year, 490 years. Okay, so just like it, it, it plainly says, so from 457 to 34 um, A.D., that's where you have the, the 490 years, the 70 weeks that is taken out. Well, not taken out, but that's that which is part of the 2300 um, years. So from from the ending of of that, then you will have 1810 years. That brings you all the way down to 1844. OK. All right. Next quote. Okay. The inquiry, perhaps, may arise. Why commence the 2300 days with the 70, with the 70 weeks? Um, I reply, one, because the 70 weeks was given as a, as a key to the 2300 days to show when they began. There, two, there is no other time to commence but that. For if we understand them literal, them literal days, we are equally at a loss where to begin. If they commence when the vision was given, the third year of Belshazzar, it is, it is not true that the sanctuary was in any sense cleansed in 2,300 days. So these are arguments that we're also going um, to have to face. Where people come up and say, well, Daniel was in the time of Belshazzar when he received it, so that's when he began. No. So these are the same arguments that are, are going to come up. Um, <clears throat> it says, if they represent 2,300 years and commence then, they would have ended 8747, 1747. So if, we, if it began with, um, with Daniel, that's where it would have been. It would have been way even before the time of the end. So that's what makes it wrong. If you take that time and bring it all the way 
down to its, to its end, you, you come to 1747. When no, when no event transpired, which could be called the cleansing of the sanctuary. But leaving that point, we have no other period at which to commence but the one designated in the 70 weeks' prophecy. Indeed, it is now admitted by the strongest opponents of these visions that the two periods were, were to begin together. But, but, then they, but then they contend that the cleansing of the sanctuary means the restoration of the Jews to Jerusalem and the commencement of a temporal millennium. That's what um, the Protestants believe. But it has already been shown from Luke 21, 24, that Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And that then, and that then they shall, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in in a cloud with power and great glory, so that the Jews will never be restored to Jerusalem until the Son of Man comes to possess his everlasting kingdom. Again, Gabriel declared expressly, at the time of at the time of the end shall shall be the vision, and the time of the end will will be shown to be from the fall of of popery, seventeen ninety eight to the end itself. Okay. All right. Let's continue reading. It says two thousand three hundred years from four fifty six and a half B.C brings us to 20 to 2300 brings us to 2300 minus 456 and a half equals 1843 and a half but it's um 457 to 1844 as we we now correctly understand it after christ 18 1800 and 1843 and one half years after christ carries us into in us into the year 1844 AD. Then it was, the angel said to Daniel, that the time of the cleansing of the sanctuary should be 2300 days. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. That this cannot be applied to the earthly sanctuary is made certain by, by the statement in Daniel 9, 26, that after the cutting off of, of the Messiah, the people, the people of the prince that should come, the Romans, should destroy the city and the sanctuary. And Christ said that when these should be destroyed, Jerusalem should be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. As that city and that sanctuary were, destroy, were to be destroyed and were destroyed by a few years af after the, the expiration of the 490 years, it is impossible that that should be the sanctuary that was to be cleansed at, at the expiration of the 2300 years. Consequently, the sanctuary that was to be cleansed at the end of the 2300 years was the heavenly sanctuary because it is, it is the only one that was then in existence. Therefore, it is certain that the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary began in, in um, A.D. 1844. I, I was, I'm not, the previous quote about that's what I just needed. I didn't hear what you said. The previous two quotes that talk about that it ended in 1747. I don't understand that. Okay. So the argument that was in Millerite history and, and is more than likely going to be resurrected in our history is that when Daniel received the vision, he was in the year of Belshazzar, right? Okay. So there, the argument in that history was because he received the vision then, that the vision began then. But if you take that, if you take the 2300 that began in the time of Daniel, the 2300 would only go to 1747. That's why he has the date 1747. But because it began in 457, when the, um, the third decree was given, it brings us to the right date, which is 1844, which has a, a um, which we were saying that shows a mark that the Lord actually went into the most holy. Amen. Yeah, it's just an argument that, that Satan put in there to bring confusion. Yeah, and but but the but Satan just um, throws in that confusion 
and, and brings that, that, that wrong seed in to, to make people confused on the point. Daniel 9. This, ar this argument uh, is a snare for you. Yes. Yeah, yes. And exactly. Amen. Yes. Yes. Because Daniel 9 plainly says from the to restore and rebuild. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's read these last three quotes and then we'll, we'll close. It says, in Avent Review of Sabbath Herald, September 18, 1900, um, 600.33. Okay, everybody there? All right. It says, the cleansing of the sanctuary, the work of atonement under the Levitical law, was a work of judgment. For, said the scripture, whatsoever soul it, it be that shall not be a that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among the people. Leviticus twenty three thirty nine. Whoever did not make confession of sin that day could have no part in the atonement that was, that was made that day. So when it came down to October 22nd, when the Lord... Where is it? It's not here. Okay. So when the Lord brought them to to July 21st which is lines up with our midway he brought them to an understanding of the 2300 and how it was to close and what was to take place in that time so as soon as he gave them an understanding of midway they had to begin a work of cleansing their sanctuary of confessing their sins and humbling themselves before the Lord which is the same thing that the Lord has brought us to. At, 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 from the fifth day to fourth month, the Lord is bringing us to an understanding of what is taking place in our time and how he's bringing these two histories together to help us to cleanse our, our, um, our sanctuary, which is ourselves. Amen? Okay. Oh, yeah, so that we could be prepared so that we can take part in this work of, of atonement. Because just like in October 22nd, it began the Day of Atonement. But there had to be a preparation before that so they know what, it, what was to come and what, were, what they were um, supposed to do. And when the sanctuary had been cleansed and the atonement made, he was, he was to be cut off without mercy. He had no other chance. His probation was gone. So as just like with um, with Israel, when they came to Mount Sinai before Christ came upon the mount, if you guys remember, the Lord told them, the Lord told Moses to tell Israel that they must prepare themselves in three days. And on the third day, they were Christ was going to come upon the mount. And what were to what were they to do in those three days? If you guys remember. Uh huh. And do well. Do what else? Uh-huh, what else? They were to do what? Wash themselves. And if you guys remember, the Lord brought us to an understanding we need to do the foot washing. So we are in these three days right before the Lord is to come because the Lord brought us to the fifth day, fourth month. He's going to bring us to the midnight cry, and then he's going to bring us to the civil Sunday law where we are to, we are to be washed before the Lord comes down and, and examines us. Because it's the, it's the same thing. Because if the, we've been saying for weeks that in the civil Sunday law comes, the Lord is going to give us a better understanding of what? The, the Sabbath. Sabbath. Amen. The Lord is going to come and give us a better understanding of the Sabbath. And when it came down to, um, to, to, to the time of, of, of Israel, when they came to Mount Sinai, he gave them the Sabbath. He gave them the law. So the same thing is going to take place with us. We're going to go through this one day two days, three days, and then Christ is going to come. So we are to prepare ourselves and wash ourselves for that very time. Amen? Amen? That's why the Lord is impressing upon us the foot washing. Philadelphia, having brotherly love, 
having the character of Christ so that we can fulfill all the law, so that we could be one with God and one with man. Because the foot washing is, brings you one with God. But having um, the spirit of Philadelphia, which is brotherly love, it brings you one with man, thus fulfilling all of the law, thus helping us to be um, in oneness with Christ. Go ahead. Oh, that's nice. I never looked at that before, the three days before October 22nd, because Moses says you got to be washed two days. The third day he comes down. Yes, amen. The three days is the fifth day of the fourth month. Mm -hmm. The second day is the first day of the fifth month, and the third day is the tenth day of the seventh month. Amen. Those, Those are the three days, days. yes. So the first two days, the fourth day, fifth day of the fourth month, the first day, that's where you wash. Mm -hmm. And then the third day, the he tenth comes. Day, he comes down. Amen. Yeah, yeah, right. And then if he comes and he says, he says, friend, why are you here without a wedding garment? The wedding garment is, your, is the character. He, the wedding garment is the same thing as the oil. You didn't have the, the, the needed preparation in that time. You didn't wash yourself. You did not remove all these sins and all these things that defile you. That is the work that we are to be doing now. That cleansing. <clears throat> Let's continue. It says, so likewise, um, the next paragraph, paragraph 34, so likewise in the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary, in the atonement made once for all, whosoever shall not confess his sins and be a partaker of the intercession of Christ can have no part in the atonement of Christ. So when it comes to the civil, the civil Sunday law, when Christ comes down, if we did not do that needed preparation, we would have no part. With, with Christ. We will have no part. He will say, depart from me. Exactly. Amen. You need that needed preparation of getting the flower. Exactly. Amen. But they still get swept away. And when that sanctuary shall, shall have been cleansed and that atonement made, he will be cut off without mercy. He will have no other opportunity. His probation will be ended. Of such it will be said, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. No longer will the precious cleansing blood be applied. These are, these are they who shall... Ring out, hey, thank you. Ring out and drink the dregs of, of the cup that is in the hand of the Lord. These are they who shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation. So this is why this is, is very important to us. It may be a type, but it has a, a lasting and permanent impression upon us. Amen? Okay. It says, next quote. Let me closing here. It says, this cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary began in um, 1844, and in the very nature of the case must soon close. We are now living in the great day of atonement. Now is the time when it is, when it is urgent upon everyone to confess his sins, to put away all his transgressions, to be a partaker of the intercession of Christ, to wash his robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. For since 1844, the seventh angel has been sounding. Soon the mystery of God will be finished, and, and the work of the gospel will be closed, and the, and the unmixed wrath of God and the Lamb will be poured upon all, all the wicked of the earth. And I pray that we will not be, um, not be a part of that, that measure. For, <clears throat> for Lord, it, it's, 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 a, it's a serious thing time that we are living in. The Lord is really opening up a lot of things unto us. And, and especially for us to, to receive these things, we must understand the, um, the 2300. For we cannot get to the Day of Atonement without a understanding of the 2300 and how it pertains to us. We, amen. No cross, no crown. So it's, this, it's the same thing. The crown that, we'll, that we will receive is an understanding of the Sabbath. It will be one jewel, it will be another jewel that will be placed upon our crown. And like she says about the law, there is a, there's a bright halo around the Sabbath. 
So there'll be a bright halo around this, this understanding that we are going to receive. But if, but if we put up a wall against it, if we reject it, or if we war against it, 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 would, it would only be to our demise. Amen. We do not want to, to fall away in this time. It is in very, it's very important. It's imperative that we understand these things, especially us here. Because it is, is it's, amen, it's to the Jew first and, also, and then to the Greek. Amen. Mm-hmm. Just leaving that life of like, you know, I just you know you go to work, you come home, you just doing in your mind I'm doing right. I don't I don't steal, I don't fight, I don't curse, you know, I'm doing my best. Mm-hmm. It's not enough to be certain because we we have many things in us that as a person I may not see it, but somebody else may see it. Mm-hmm. And a lot know that I have faith and it's intense. Like and only so what I'm saying is that only by understanding what Christ has been through, then you then you will you will understand you will be cleansed and be ready for Amen. Because we all must receive the foot washing. We all, we, none of us can be like Judas and reject the foot washing. Yes, yes um, Judas took part in the literal foot washing because he didn't want to be, to be seen outside of the group. But he did not receive the foot washing because he wasn't cleansed from his, his wrong ideas of, of Christ only bringing in the kingdom of glory. He wasn't cleansed from his wrong earthly nature and being um, covetous after, um, after money. So with us, we must, we must also receive the foot washing. Not literally just receiving the foot washing, but re- receiving the foot washing spiritually that our minds may be cleansed from all defilement. That's what the, the, the cleansing of the sanctuary truly is pointing to. Cleansing us from our wrongs, the things handed down from the heathen and the papists. Those are cultivated and hereditary traits of, of, of error. Those things is, is what the true foot washing is, 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 um, is teaching us. Because she says that the law doesn't save. Yeah, so, you know, so it is right what the world believes that we are saved by grace, but you have to understand what is grace. Yeah, they, you know, what was that? Definitely not. You must understand where Christ is. Where do you go to get that grace? Amen. It's all well to understand it, but where is it? You finish, Michelle? Let us show that our hearts and conscience are under the transformation influence of divine grace. That our lives are governed by the pure principles and law of God, even though these principles may require the sacrifice of of temporal life. This gospel grace has softened the heart, refined and purified the soul that is given. Basically, you know, grace is kind of, it's going to take you through all of Christ's life. You, You living, you going through what all of what Christ been through. You know, and it's going to allow us to see all of that. You know, but again, it's, it's not just sitting there saying, I'm saved by grace. Like, it's a statement that you just think it's just sit there and you just receive. Amen. They try to follow Christ, but they don't follow him to the cross. Yeah, because yeah. He, we, have to, we have to accept the things that he went, that he went through all of our, all of our, um, what's that? All of our um, infirmities. Infir- infir- in- infirmities. Infirmities, you know, and mm-hmm. understanding that, then it's going to allow us to accept the law, you know, and to be cleansed. Amen. So, Go ahead, Connor. And I was going to say to what Michelle said, yes, what you're going over, the importance of it is you can say that you know Jesus, but if you don't know Daniel 9, you do not know Jesus. Amen. If you don't understand the <coughs> 200 days, you do not have Christ. That, that was the burden 
of in Christ's time. He was trying to get the Jews to say, you do not have God. Amen. Unless you have this. Yeah, I know you're Abraham's seed, but Abraham's not your father. Mm -hmm. You don't have him. Amen. You know, if you don't do the works of... And you he was pointing... Yeah, you don't know the scriptures. If you don't go to the place that talks about him, you do not have him. Amen. So otherwise, at the end of the world, and the true witness says, you don't know that you're blind. You think I'm in the house, but I'm not in the house. I'm trying to get into the house. Amen. And so Daniel 9, because there's many Christ, he says. He says there are many Christ, but there's mm -hmm. only one, one true, true Christ. And Daniel 9 shows you the one, because many people have died on the cross. Many Christ have died on the cross. Mm -hmm. But only one true Christ can fulfill Daniel 9. So simply saying, I have Christ and not really knowing who he is, nope. it doesn't mean you have him, because Christ is the truth. Having the truth that teaches you about Christ then you have Christ. So Amen. It's, and that's what the Lord is trying to show us. He's showing us that, man, up to this time, we never really had him. Uh, we, you know, we've been walking in the light, but we really have to possess him, which is possessing the, the truth. And the first, second, and third is what leads you down to, to, to having Christ form within at the end of the world. Amen. That being said, let's close with a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you, O Lord, for how you have brought us thus far. We pray, Lord, that you, that you may continue to walk with us, helping us in our understanding to, to see our condition in relation to you. And help us, O Lord, that we may humble ourselves, Lord, as, as those righteous before us. Please guide us um, continually through thy word. And as you have said, that you, may, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We pray that you may continually be with us helping us to, to see these things clearly that we may make a change and, and turn from our, from our faults. Help us in this day, and please continue to be with us through the remaining portions of our, of our um, presentations this weekend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.